and the Chiefs respond with the big hits of their own. Now, good Chiefs support at the stadium today. Let's go. News, views, and behind-the-scenes chats from Sandy Park. This is the Exeter Chiefs podcast. What can I say? 62-25. After six games without a win, we're back on the board, Chubby. And, and what a way to do it. It was absolutely fantastic to watch. The crowd were almighty in their noise. Um, and they had so much to cheer about. Uh, yes, we were playing a Cardiff side who were all sort of under 17s, but um, they still had to put it away. And, and that first two minutes was a little bit squeaky. They got the first try. But the presence of mind that the boys showed just to calmly go through the gears. And once they were up into top gear, they were absolutely flying. So um, we're not on the bench today. We're sat up outside box five and they haven't seen us yet because we found out that David Flatman, Tom Shanklin, who's just done the commentary on BT Sport and Nolsey are recording a podcast. The, the Flats and Shanks podcast. Not the Mark and Chubby podcast. No, so no. we decided to come and sit outside and we're going to gate crash in a minute. It might get us banned from the club, but we thought we'd do it anyway. Um, and I've got some questions I want to ask Flats anyway, so we'll just interrupt if we, if, if, if we can. But let's have a quick chat about the, the Chiefs performance today because the first seven minutes were a little bit jittery and we've just heard that from Ricky Pello in the press conferences. Yeah, but it, it's a very young side. You know, there's some old... The, the the exciting thing about today was we had some real experience and class coming back from injury and we had some real class from the academy and the university and the two needed that little short period just to bed in and then they started to really click. I was loving uh, loving seeing TJ on the pitch. I was nice to see, uh, see him on and uh, loving the chanting. Did you hear it after he scored his try? I don't know what minute it was, somewhere 60-ish, but lovely chanting from, uh, from the library. Yeah, the, the, the uh, a round of applause that TJ got for his try was huge, the biggest of the, of the um, afternoon. And uh, it, it was a quality move that he finished off very neatly. But uh, I thought, well, across the board, um, Campagnaro played a fabulous game. Nice to see him back. Uh, Sam Simmons moving from uh, the back row onto the wing when Ian Whitten came off. He was absolutely awesome. Well, Ricky said in the press conference a moment ago that that, that was something they wanted to try and it was mm. good to see that. So let's hear from him talking about that now. Yeah, I mean, any player that, you know, young, you know in a young age needs to be playing. And I think for him to be playing down at Plymouth is a massive tool for him in terms of development. And for any player, you know, whether they're going down to Pirates, you know, or to Taunton, you know, on that side of it. So Joe's coming through now. You know, he's, he's been playing well the last couple of weeks and obviously he showed today that that game time week in week out he's now transferred into putting it on in the extra shirt so he had a really good game I thought his brother you know, backed him up well in, in the back row and we got to move him out onto the wing you know, to have a look at him there and I think he was solid there as well so you know, the Simmons brothers both played really well today Straight from Ricky let's hear from the boy man of the match who was of course Chubby Joe Simmons and you said that before the boys from BT Sport got a chance to they were building up I was listening to the to the coverage and then he comes on and today's man of the match well let's hear from him now I know it was Dave you know from him but I just focused on myself and the team um, but yeah it was bonus to, to get the start and to get the win but yeah it was a great performance from the lads and yeah, great game to be involved in. Wasn't the best to start. We'll no, scrub out the first four or five it, minutes. A bit slow to get off the blocks, but I, we knew what we had to do after that, and yeah, just put the pressure on. But kept them in their own half, and yeah, we got the tries from it. So before we gate crash the uh, the superstars uh, who uh, who are in the behind the window. Um, Chubby, you've, uh, you've, you've been up to HQ, haven't you? I have, yes. I was allowed up to London because I polished my shoes. And what were you doing yesterday? Were you, um, weren't you hosting, hosting one of the stages at, um, at Twickenham? I was, yes, I was host of the uh, fan village in the car park. So basically a car park attendant. So you're like Jack Noll now, you're an international. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> right, shall we go in there and have a look and see if we can talk to them? Why do I have to go first? Why, why? It's still sound checking. Right, okay. Why, I have to go first. Right. Afternoon. Hello, come on in. Hello. We, we, we've, um, we've just been talking about Chubby being an international now because he got to go to Twickenham yesterday, so we thought we'd come and talk to some real internationals. Yeah. <laughs> so in the room that we've just um, gate crashed, we've got Flats. How are you, fella? Very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, um, a little bit, um, I don't know, feeling outnumbered by professional equipment. We do this on an iPhone and you've got more microphones than my radio studio. What's with all the kit? 
Did your microphone pick up Shanks' fart just now? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I can smell it. Your afternoon, Shanks. How are you? Yeah, very good, very good. Yeah, we are. We do have all a kit, to be fair, but none of us really know how it works. Well, you're the boy setting it up, so that makes you the roadie, yeah? Yeah, sort of. I mean, I'm very good with computers, and especially like Safari and uh, Firefox um, of deleting history, but <laughs> not so good when it comes to um, MIDI players and microphones. Okay, well, uh, and Nolsey, are you co-hosting with these boys today, yeah? Um, yeah, they're going to look after me, so I'm excited. So we, we wondered if we could have a quick chat with you about Chiefs today. Is that all right, as we've just, just walked in? Um, so from your seat where you were sat at Flats, what did you make of the performance today from the younger boys? Um, I, I mean, I spent most of it in the um, Undercroft bar with the, with the pork and crackling, so I didn't see much of it. I really liked it. I actually did spend a bit of time in there. I went, went, I went in twice. You get these meal tickets when you come I here. And Steve, 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 Steve-O sorted me out with two, no mucking about, straight in, yeah. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. And I kind of, uh, you know, I, I like it when there's a sprinkling of experienced players as well as the young kids because, it, you know, while academies are important, an academy game doesn't have the same draw as a first-team game for obvious reasons. And Cardiff just put a team full of kids out, which is absolutely fine, but they got battered. And... Um, what I liked was the young kids, the Simmons boys at 10 and 7. It's Simmons at 10 and 7, isn't it? They look really impressive. And you sort of feel like Exeter's a club in good hands when you see guys like that playing. But then, you know, for probably the best player on the field for me was Damian Welch. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. I would say that because he's a front five forward, but I thought he was fantastic. Um, Campagnaro, love watching him, um, especially with ball in hand. Uh, just really, really. And, and Tom Johnson, who hasn't got a lot of love the last few years because Chiefs have got such resource in the back row but I like seeing him get on the ball and I enjoyed it last week at Quinn seeing him get on the ball because he's he's still even though he's 44 now he's um (laughs) he's still a nightmare to defend because he's sharp off the mark um we heard from Joe Simmons a couple of minutes ago obviously man of the match today um Steve-O interviewing him post-match was saying to him that you know you're kind of it's the next crop is is coming through behind the likes of Slade and and Noel What, what do you make of that I should introduce you. No, we'll see. What do you make of it? No, I think um, you know it's easy. It's easy to say because we we've all been there. We've done that, and that's where you kind of start. Um, and I think competitions like this obviously give you that platform to 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 show a bit what you've got. He's been out at Plymouth, um, you know, all year so far. Maybe not in the limelight as much, but when you've got like uh, Flat said, the older boys there looking after you, like Johnson uh, and boys like that, Skipper in the side, it does really um, give you that edge and that 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 drive to go forward and, and you know really show the coach what you've got. So you're co-hosting with these guys today, yeah? Yeah, we're going to have a bit of uh, a bit of fun, a bit of chit chat. So, Flats, what did you make of um, of England yesterday? Another win under Eddie Jones. I think England will be happy enough with it. I mean, um, it's difficult because you don't want to sound one of those like one of those sort of dour ex pros who's bitter and because he never beat South Africa by forty points and all that. But I, no, we did. No, I'm joking. No, I did though. No, we didn't though. Um, but I, I kind of think that. The whole it was a nice performance and scoring thirty seven points against the Springboks is special and that's definitely true. Some guys played really, really well. But I do think that it's all tempered a little bit by how poor South Africa were. I thought they were really, really poor and to the point of being, you know, kind of a bit sad actually. And um just getting shredded like that by Ben Young. Sort of love watching Ben Young's play when he's fully on it. I think he's so threatening and having played against him. Uh, up, up there with Danny Kerr, both of them are just a nightmare to defend against for the big fellas near the ruck in the last sort of, 20, 25 minutes of a game when your legs are heavy, and or well, the first 25 for me, frankly. But um, it's just seeing them go through. First of all, you celebrate and punch the air and go Youngsy. And after the game, you just think your defence has got to be in a proper state to be getting done like that. It really has. Re- when repeatedly during a game, they just looked like they didn't have a shot to fire in attack. And it was just... Um, Except for picking a few big lads who weren't that big anyway, they they offered nothing, and I thought it was a bit sad. Uh, and Nolsey, what a, how frustrating is it um, being a boy from the team being injured at the moment, watching yesterday? Yeah, I think obviously very frustrating, you know, to you know to have such a good summer away, you know, not just with England but obviously Chiefs. So you kind of want to come back firing, but you know my thumb was pretty much hanging on, so I had to get that sorted. But then, you know, to pick up an injury straight away after your first week being back is, is a tough pill to swallow, but. Um, you know, it's quite easy for me to flip it and, you know, concentrate on now getting back fit and, you know, performing well for Exeter. Um, you know, obviously I'm watching England and, you know, seeing what they're doing, but for me at the moment it's just getting back fit and playing for Exeter and playing well to get back into the squad. And before we bugger off and let you get on with this, um, Tom, can I ask you about Wales? So, uh, the, the, the score you wanted to see yesterday um, coming out the back of that, what did you make of the performance? And also, Tom Thomas Francis, what did you make of him yesterday? 
Uh, yeah, it didn't matter what the score was. I think Wales just needed to win. There was so much pressure on them after the Australia game where they got absolutely MC hammered. So uh, it, the performance for me didn't really matter. It just They just needed to win. Um, they picked quite a few new players as well, in different combinations, which seemed to work. Um, but I thought they did their homework well on Argentina. They're pretty good in set piece. And Flats, I'm sure, would be able to comment a little bit more on that. But Thomas Francis seemed to do pretty well in the scrum. All right, I'm thinking that, Dave. Don't don't give him too long hair tags. Uh, yeah, you are. Uh, yeah. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, you are, you're right. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, but Liam Williams, <laughs> Liam Williams, sorry, it's 100 quid Mike. Um, <laughs> Nolsey smashing the kit yeah. up. Uh, he's a rock star. Um, Liam Williams was incredible um, on the wing. It's quite difficult to make huge impacts, I sometimes think, off the wing because you're not always in the game. But he was very good. And Alan Jones was good. So they can still be three from four, which will be a successful campaign. So it's not all doom and gloom for them. Uh, and as a former Blue, how was that for you today watching uh, the game at Sandy Park? Didn't mind it whatsoever because I have nothing to do with them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you, you knew right. You knew when the team was picked, it, it was going to be a, a tough ask. You know, you're talking about kids who uh, can't even grow a Movember. Um, so I, honestly, I watched them coming through um, the tunnel, and they were so so young. Um, so you knew it was going to be a tough ask for them. You know, it's men against boys, basically. Um, but they still managed to show up okay. They did score a couple of tries, or bonus three tries, point. I think. What? They got a bonus point, didn't they? They scored four tries. They scored four tries, didn't they? I lost count. All of us guys were at the game, and none, none of us can confirm if he's right or not, including the commentator. <laughs> yeah, uh, they, uh, Cardiff scored nine tries. Incredible, really. But just to pick up, just to pick up on, a, on, <laughs> and they won. on one player that we have to watch out for. He's been with the Welsh squad all week, a number 15 called Reen Williams. Mm. Um, they rate him really highly. He didn't get much room today, but... And I kept calling him Ryan. Yeah, or Ru- Ruin. Uh, but it's green. Right. Uh, you kept saying that in your in your commentary that they, yeah. he just wasn't getting the the space uh, to, to to perform it the way he can. I'm glad you listened. Yeah, not many people do. <laughs> um, but yeah, he did. He, he he's 15 and he didn't really get that much ball to run back with today. Um, he didn't really attack the wide channels that much because of he was starved of ball. But you look when he does get ball in hand, he is very very elusive and attacking. Well, boys, thank you very much for letting us gate crash and coming on the Chiefs podcast. Uh, Chubby, have you got anything else to add? Their podcast sounds more funny than ours. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll have to leave that in. But anyway, speak to you next week. <laughs> make sure, I'll make sure before we leave. Like we, you know, we welcome you guys with open arms, but. We, we let Chubbs in because we think we're going to get some meat out of this from Piper's Farm, you know. Piper's Farm. <laughs> Mate, he doesn't work there anymore. Kick oh, him yeah. out. <laughs> oh, for Christ's sake, get out. He works for the council. Kick him out. All right, can you get me a petrol-powered mower or a strimmer or something? They're perfect. I've just taken on an allotment. Can you get me one? Yes. Thanks, chaps. Bye. Great, Bye. thank you. Cheers, boys. Your behind-the-scenes access to Sandy Park. Thank you. The Exeter Chiefs podcast.